You are listening to The Centropic Oracle, an audiobook podcast of science fiction and fantasy short stories that make you think and feel. Back at the Cube Farm by Brandon Nolta Steve, a voice whispered from the top of my cubicle. I looked up from my project spreadsheet and nearly swallowed my gum. Jim, my former colleague, was peering down at me like a mop-headed office Kilroy. It wasn't so much that I was surprised to see Jim. He'd loved working here and told everyone so during his two years in the Netrix Services cube farm, as I was surprised to see him without cops trying to beat him down and take him in. Jim, I said, what the hell are you doing here? I quit, he said, coming around to sit at his old cubicle across the aisle from me. It wasn't for me. You can't quit, I said automatically. That's your assignment. Six months ago, the semi-annual federal employment lottery had reassigned Jim away from his project management position. The United States was late to the party in creating a fully automated employment lottery. Sweden, land of Ikea and depressing crime novels, went first, but made up for it by being the first to make it mandatory. More importantly, it was one of the only lottery systems to include every conceivable position. Even the illegal ones. They can't make me be an outlaw, Jim said, shuffling the blank papers on his desk. Come on, man. Do you know how many people here would give their eye teeth to do what you do? I told him. Hell, I was one of them. Who wouldn't want to be designated one of the few state-sanctioned criminals with almost no penalties? Outlaw status is a legal license to be bad. They can keep them, Jim said. It's not as fun as you think. Down the aisle, I could hear the ding of the elevator, the whoosh of the doors, and what sounded like the shuffle of a bison herd on the corporate beige carpet. I peeked around the corner and saw a platoon of SWAT personnel, guns up and swiftly moving around the edges of the cube farm. A squat fireplug of a man in black slacks and an FBI windbreaker stood by the elevator, whispering urgently into a walkie-talkie. So, what'd you do to draw the cops? I whispered to Jim, who'd heard the doors open. He motioned me over to his cube with a surprisingly large matte black pistol. Not everything about being an outlaw disagreed with him, I thought, as I crossed the aisle and squatted down next to him. Did you know? The FEA sends the outlaw designee suggestions. Banks to rob, drug dens to hit, the, the occasional rich couple to terrorize and tie up. Jim said, taking a silver detonator out of his pocket. We can go off the reservation somewhat as long as we don't rape or kill anybody like we need to be told. Who would do that? Just executives, I said, eyeing the detonator. I never wanted to be a criminal, but I thought it might be fun, Jim said. He turned the key on the bottom of the dead man switch, and the button lit up red. Classic design. Instead... Every day, a new list of suggestions complete with victim lists. Allowed action insurance coverage ratios, escape routes, even press releases for big-ticket crimes. I had more freedom as a paper pusher. I nodded, wondering how far Jim was going to take this. We all got the same brochure when we turned 18, explaining how the employment lottery worked, the number of measurements that went into every personalized job list, and the intricate web of insurance and risk assessment that protected people in every employment role. Not as free as the old days, but a lot more stable. I can't even go to the supermarket, Jim grumbled, adjusting his jacket. Underneath, a bandolier of what looked like white clay blocks hugged his chest. News channels had started calling him Slim Jim after he blew up a bunch of cars in downtown Boston. Well, blew up is a little strong. He was blowing off doors, wheels, the roof of a Buick sedan in one case. Turns out everyone was parked illegally. So, what's the plan? I asked him nervously. Jim was good people, but the guy I remember didn't pack explosives and pistols. Ah, no, I thought. Did I opt out of the hostage coverage plan on my insurance? The cafeteria plan sounded better at the time. Jim pulled back on the slide of his pistol. I thought I'd try negotiating. 
Ready to be famous? Before I could answer, an oversized hockey puck rolled in next to us. We both turned away, but the flash lit up the cube like a giant camera. Light blasted through my eyelids, and by the time I could see and hear anything other than the noise and the glare, Jim was face down on the floor, disarmed and trussed up. Nice job, Slim Jim. That's how a real outlaw plays it, the FBI fireplug said as he helped pick Jim off the floor. Let's go talk to the DA about that so-called resignation of yours. Maybe you'll avoid jail time after all. Jail? For trying to quit being an outlaw? Jim asked as the SWAT guys hustled down the aisle. That's a serious offense, the FBI guy said. Think you saved your ass with this little stunt. Taking a hostage in the workplace. Nobody does that anymore. They hustled Jim into the elevator, leaving the official police photographers behind to gather all the pictures for evidence and insurance. After the police medic cleared me, and the Netrix medic certified me eligible for three days trauma-related leave, I went home. Subway was about half full. And on every screen and smartphone, Slim Jim's face stared out, looking pained as he was stuffed into a gray police van and driven away. I sat down, leaned back, and started thinking about my employment status. Another lottery was coming up. I was eligible for reassignment, and it sounded like there might be an opening for an outlaw soon. Maybe I'd get lucky. We hope you enjoyed Back at the Cube Farm by Brandon Nolta, read by John Michael Garropy. If you'd like to make a donation to the author and narrator of this story, check out the story page link in the description and click the PayPal donate button, or pledge your support to us directly on Patreon. Would you like to submit a story to the Centropic Oracle? A link to our submission guidelines can be found in the description.